Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, Not Your Average Mama. So if you're looking for some quick and easy keto recipes, then this is where you need to be. We're gonna make some uh, chocolate whips and we're also gonna make some keto mini Reese's. And then I'm also gonna show you two other ideas. One is a pork wrap and the other one is the fried chicken made with pork rinds. So if you wanna see how I make that, then stick around. So the whips are really easy. All you're gonna need is some heavy cream, some cocoa powder and some artificial sweetener. This is Stevia um, Publix brand. So what you're gonna do is I have a um, KitchenAid mixer, but you can also just use your hand mixer or a whisk. But if you use a whisk and do it by hand, it's gonna take a lot of work. You're probably gonna throw some muscles. So I put my attachment on here. Start with one cup of the heavy cream. I'm going to mix that. Okay, so now I'm gonna drop in about a tablespoon of stevia. And maybe two tablespoons of chocolate. And this is unsweetened cocoa powder. I'm gonna scrape my bowl. Notice this part of the video is not sped up. This is literally the quickest and easiest keto dessert I have ever seen and it's delicious. If I would have scraped the bowl sooner, then I would not be having this issue right now. Alright, it's all mixed together. So here I have a plate and some wax paper to put them on. I'm gonna take this piping attachment right here. It's just one that you would use for cupcakes and stick it into a bag, a frosting bag. Then I'm gonna put all my mixture into the bag. You can change a few things in this recipe. You can add more cocoa or more stevia or less stevia or less cocoa and you can make it however you want it to be. You don't have to put it in the piping bag and do it like this either. And you don't have to freeze it either. You can keep it in the refrigerator or in the freezer. If you want them to be frozen and be kind of like ice cream, put them in the freezer. If you put it in the refrigerator, it'll be kind of like a chocolate mousse. 
and it's really good that way. This batch is not big enough for me because my kids and my husband want to eat this too. So now I'm just going to pipe some of this onto this plate. You don't have to do this step. Sometimes I actually just spoon it into um, small containers and then stick it into the refrigerator to hold that way. Um, but I like to do the whips like this because then I don't have to have all those extra containers. I can just freeze them, put them in a Ziploc bag, and then have them in the Ziploc bag and eat them one at a time. So I'm just gonna pipe. So now I'll just pop these into the fridge and I'll show you them whenever they're done. And here's our chocolate whips. So I'm just gonna put these in a Ziploc bag. See, they come right off. There you go. And now you just pop these into the refrigerator and you can just eat them as you want them, one at a time. Now we're making chocolate mini Reese's that are keto friendly. So I'm gonna start by putting my paddle attachment on my mixer. And then I'm gonna add one cup of all natural sugar-free Jiffy peanut butter. Now the salted butter goes in and we cream those together until they're well blended. Now I'm going to add my half a cup of vanilla protein powder and also my quarter cup of artificial sweetener. I did forget to add my one tablespoon of vanilla, so I added that at the end. Make sure you stop the mixer and scrape the bowl, the edges, and the sides so everything gets mixed well. I used this mold that I bought at Walmart for about $3, maybe a year ago. It makes the perfect size for one serving. It's silicone, so it's easy to pop them out and nothing is going to stick to it. I get my chocolate out and then break it into pieces into a clear glass bowl and melt it in the microwave 30 seconds at a time until it's completely melted. I use a clear glass bowl that way I can see all the parts that are melted and all the parts that are not. Here's the chocolate all melted. Now I'm just going to spoon a little bit into the bottom of each one of these little holes. It takes about a minute and a half to melt all the chocolate completely. Even if there's a couple of pieces still not melted, you need to keep stirring it and then you'll see that it'll be all liquid. Now I'm just putting all of the peanut butter mixture into a piping bag that I would use for frosting. You don't have to use a piping bag. You can always just use a Ziploc bag and cut the corner out of it, or you can spoon it into the, each of the holes. But I just find this is easier for me to do. Now I just pipe a little bit into each one of the holes. It's okay if the chocolate comes to the top from the bottom. That means it's just surrounding the peanut butter mixture. 
Now I'm adding a little extra chocolate to the top just to cover the whole candy. Then you want to shake the candy mold a little bit and get any of the air bubbles out and this also evens out the chocolate a little bit. And that's it. Pop them in the fridge for about 10 minutes and you're done. And we're all done. These were in the freezer for about 10 minutes. So you just pop them out. This recipe is kind of time consuming but they're really good and it makes about 60 of these at a time so it's like a whole bag of mini Reese's. And there you go. Little mini Reese cups. You must keep these in the freezer. They do not travel well at all. Here's how I make the batter for my keto fried chicken. So I use these pork rinds as my base and I add Parmesan cheese and some spices and then I um, fry it in this um, coconut oil. So I take the pork rind and I stick them in here. No, I didn't measure anything. I just threw it all in there. I've never really messed it up. And you can use this for more than just fried chicken. Anything that I fry that I would normally dip in a flour, I can dip in this and then fry it. It's kind of gritty, kind of like cornmeal. Now you're going to take some heavy cream and dip it, dip the chicken in the heavy cream and then dip it in this mixture and then put it in your oil and fry it up that way. I also added seasoning to the heavy cream. I used the party size bag so I made a large batch all at once and I can add different seasonings for different things. Any extra that you have, you can just put in a Ziploc bag or a container and keep it in the refrigerator until you want to use it again. Here's a family favorite. I make these or a buffalo chicken version about every week. I love these tortillas. They taste just like regular tortillas. They're a little expensive, so I just use these for mine. These I use for everybody else. I put the pork in the Instapot for 10 minutes on pressure cook, and then I let it sit for about 14 minutes before I open the lid. I pulled it out, make sure it's done, stick it in the KitchenAid mixer so it can shred it for me. You don't have to do this. You can always shred it by hand, but this is just easier for me. Once it's shredded enough, then I go ahead and add in the whole block of cream cheese. That's about 8 ounces until that's thoroughly mixed together. At this point, it kind of looks like cat food, but trust me, it tastes very good. I scoop the meat mixture onto the tortilla, and then I roll it up like a burrito. which I'm obviously not very good at, but who cares? I'm going to eat it. Then I make everybody else's on their regular tortillas. And I repeat this until all of my meat is gone. Then I have some butter in a pan and I just brown them. Flip them over. Let them brown on the other side, and then you're done.